This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've had a busy weekend of stakes racing action. Huge day on Saturday in South Florida where it called her. They ran Florida Millions Day all day, uh, Florida Breads, and some terrific stakes action kicking things off in the Florida Bread Series, the Bonnie Heath Turf Cup for older grass runners. And they're off, and Soldier's Dancer unseated the rider out of the gate. Number four, Soldier's Dancer stumbled and unseated jockey Manuel Cruz at the start. Rachel's Dancer is off to the lead. Silver Tree is in the second spot. Up on the outside, Fairweather Stands got a good spot third. I see Atlantic is already three and a half, now four lengths off the lead. And Magic Mecky is last of the five as they pass the stands with one lap to go. The opening quarter, very moderate, 24 and three. Just a walk in the park so far for Rachel's Dancer. He's going slowly and he's on a clear lead into the clubhouse turn. It's Rachel's Dancer in front. He's got it by almost two right now. Here comes the riderless horse to cause a little bit of a problem. So Rachel's Dancer is in front. Silver Tree is there in the second spot. Fairweather Stan runs along in third, then Icy Atlantic. And Magic Mecky is a close-up trailer. They're very well bunched as they go on to the backstretch run. The half mile was 50 and 2. And it is Rachel's Dancer showing the way and unfortunately being pressured by the riderless horse on the front end now. So Rachel's Dancer wanted to accelerate. Looked like the jockey slowed him right back down as they went to the half mile mark as the riderless horse is causing problems for Rachel's Dancer on the front end. Rachel's Dancer having to check in behind that riderless horse and that enables Silver Tree to go up to get the lead from the outside. So it is Silver Tree now and Edgar Prado who have overtaken the field and they're in front as they go around the turn. Magic Mecky is coming after him from between runners. I see Atlantic is on the extreme outside. They come to the head of the stretch in the Bonnie Heath Turf Cup. It's still Silver Tree. Magic Mecky there, Icy Atlantic. Behind them, Fairweather Stan. Icy Atlantic, Magic Mecky, Silver Tree battling on down along the hedge. Fairweather Stan in with an upset chance, but it's Icy Atlantic hitting the front. Icy Atlantic and Cornelio Velasquez win the Bonnie Heath Turf Cup. Magic Mecky was second, Fairweather Stan and Silver Tree. Icy Atlantic scores his first victory of the year. I was a little surprised when I realized that he was winless this season. But he hadn't run all that often, had run a couple of times fairly well. Here gets in with Florida Breads and wins off under a strong hand ride over Magic Mecky and Fairweather Stan. Of course, the race was marred by uh, Soldier's Dancer stumbling at the start, losing his rider. And it may have cost a couple of the horses involved a spot or two when they did uh, get maybe a little bit of uh, interference from the loose horse. The winner, Icy Atlantic is a bay son of Stormy Atlantic from Frosty Promise by Frosty the Snowman, bred in Florida by Arthur Appleton and owned by James Fatorchio. Trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden a victory by Cornelio Velasquez, I see Atlantic covers the nine furlongs and won 50.32. Next up, it's the Jack Price Juvenile for Florida bred, uh, Florida bred two-year-olds going seven furlongs. And they're off. Perfect start. Three-part harmony toward the outside. Big pushes showing speed. Gara came out well. Bit him down along the inside. Is right up there with the leaders as well. March 12th settles down fifth. He's now three and a half lengths off the pace. Then Biblionico Sayers down along the inside. And Salo Jack will have to pass them all. He's already nine or ten lengths back 
A big push in Cornelio Velasquez with five furlongs to run. Big push the inside, three-part harmony right alongside. There goes three-part harmony to stick his nose out in front. Gara is right there, third. Bit him bottled up down along the rail. He's got ne going to need some racing room. He's only about two lengths off the lead. March 12th is in behind them. Then Biblionico and Sayers. And Salo Jack still has the best view of the field. They move into the far turn. Big push right back to stick his nose in front. Three-part harmony right alongside. Gara is a joint third with Bidham pinned down to the inside. These four are well clear. Salo Jack is starting to uncoil from the back of the pack. He's all the way up to fifth, but still six lengths back. A big push and three-part harmony. Big push, three-part harmony. Bidham now switches way off the rail, and he's got clear sailing on the grandstand side, but it's big push and three-part harmony still going on with it. Big push the inside, three-part harmony right alongside. Now Salo Jack is starting to fire through a big opening down at the rail, and he here comes Salo, Jack, and Javier Santiago, and they'll win the Jack Price Juvenile. Three-part harmony with second tight for third, bid him, or big push. Salo, Jack, picking up the win here from well back off the pace. In fact, making a last to first move to get up by a length and a quarter over three-part harmony and bid him. He's now two for three off of a maiden special weight performance. A nice victory last time out. After having debuted maiden claiming company, was promptly moved up in class rather rapidly and has handled the move quite nicely. The winner, Salo Jack, is a chestnut two-year-old son of Graham Hall from Fen Fafnir by Inspired Prospect, bred in Florida by Mark Cassie, owned by Me Jack Racing Stable and trained by Gilberto Zerpa, ridden to victory by Javier Santiago. Salo Jack covers the seven and one twenty-four point nine zero. We'll continue now with stakes racing action from Florida, the John Franks Juvenile Phillies And they're off. And a Maribel came out well toward the inside. August Rush's flashing speed. Oil gone wild. R Brown Sugar. Hot Chili Pepper now moving on through. Four or five of them in a real scramble for the early pace. It's Oil Gone Wild who takes the lead with one lap to go. R Brown Sugar is content to be in the second spot. Then Hot Chili Pepper. August Rush between Phillies. And Exy is three wide going into the clubhouse turn. A Maribel is now back behind them and she'll save ground around the head along the hedge. Brazilian Bombshell has about four and a half to make up. Then Mariah's Wish. Kumana is trying to sneak through an opening at the inside. Black Russian is four wide around the clubhouse turn. Then it's Never Lie and Princess Town will have to pass them all. The opening quarter was 23 seconds flat. And it's R. Brown Sugar and Elvis Trujillo who find the lead. Oil Gone Wild presses from the outside. Hot Chili Peppers in the clear in third. Amaribel is only two and a half lengths back. Kumana is down along the hedge. And here comes Kumana. She's now all the way up into four and less than two lengths off the lead. Exy is on the extreme outside. Then Mariah's Wish. Black Russian is trying to get involved. She's only four lengths back. They're bunched up after a half of 48 and four, and they move into the far turn. It's still our brown sugar from between runners. Oil gone wild. Here comes Hot Chili Pepper, and Hot Chili Pepper's on the attack from the outside, and she's up to get the lead as they come to the top of the lane. Hot Chili Pepper off the turn. She's the one to catch, and Maribel trying to close in at her. Exy is in with a shot on the grandstand side. Amaribel, Exy, Hot Chili Pepper now back to third. It's Exy and Amaribel kicking on. Exy the outside, Amaribel in tight down along the hedge. It's Exy, Amaribel, Exy just in front. Exy, Exy takes the John Franks Juvenile Phillies turf. Amaribel second tight for third. Exy, you may remember her from maiden claiming win at Mammoth in the uh, latter part of that meet. Headed back down to Florida with Florida Bread's last time out was third in the My Dear Girl. Moved on to the turf and handled it quite nicely, as, his, as her pedigree would indicate she would. She is a daughter of exchange rate whose offspring do very well when they're moved to the grass. Amara Bell rallies from well back off the pace, perhaps a little bit of an early rally. She got to the lead maybe a little too soon. Kumana completes the top three. The winner, Exy, is a gray or roan daughter of exchange rate from Exaggerate by Cat Thief. Bred in Florida by Padua Stable and owned by James Riccio. Trained by Eddie Place, a junior, and ridden to victory by Manny Cruz. Exy covers the mile in a 16th and 144.56. We'll head right back to Calder now in the Joe O'Farrell Juvenile Phillies. And they're off. Good even start. Frolic Stream is flashing her normal speed, and Pink Gloss is coming through from the inside to challenge for the early lead. Sailing Time came out running in third. Uh, Roma de Mujer is now into third from the rail as they make their way out of the chute. 
and on to the main track. Trippy's Great Star is racing five and a half lengths back, and Tiger Song is alongside of her. It's the big favorite, Frolic Dream, and Jermaine Bridgemahan getting the lead. Frolic Dream didn't have to work all that hard to make the lead, and she's opened up now two, two and a half. Pink Gloss going to have to win it from just off the pace today. Aroma de Mujer is now shifted to the outside with a half mile to go. Tiger Song is up to a joint fourth, sailing time just alongside of her. And Trippy's Great Star has the best view of the field. She's six lengths back of Frolic Stream as they move into the far turn. Frolic Stream just cruising right along. Her lead is about two now from Pink Gloss. Aroma de Mujer is coming under a heavy shove right now as Trippy's Great Star starts to get involved from the back of the pack. She's splitting fillies now, but still well behind Frolic Stream as they come to the head of the stretch. Frolic Stream now asks the question. She is responding. She opens up to lead it by five. Trippy's great star on the grandstand side has moved all the way into second, then Pink Gloss sailing time down along the rail. But it's Frolic Dream, and she is just cruising past the 16th pole. Whip is out on Trippy's great star, who's a clear second. Frolic Dream, Bridge Mahan is still as a statue, and they hold on to win the Joe O'Farrell Juvenile Phillies. Trippy's great star was second, maybe Tiger's song third. Frolic Dream now three for three. She won the Cassidy here in October by 11 or 12 rather lengths in a very big performance here she got to the lead never looked back opened as much as five or six lengths mid stretch and was eased under the wire a length and a quarter advantage over trippy's great star with tiger's song four and a half lengths back in third the winner frolic stream is a gray or roan two-year-old daughter of smoke lacken from flashy frolic by premiership bred in florida by Robert A. Murphy and Dr. Sandy L. Price Murphy, owned by Dare to Dream Farm and trained by Marty Wolfson. Ridden to victory by Jermaine Bridge Mahan, Frolic Stream covers the 7 and 124.95. We'll continue with Florida bred stakes action in the Jack Dudley Sprint. And they're off. Perfect start. Rexon's Rose, wise answer from the outside. Duke's Flying Tiger is right there. Like now, Ruby's Red Sox is moving on through. Yes by Jiminy, how's your halo? These seven all battling for the early lead. And Hypocrite is going to take a seat at the back of the pack. And he's only about six lengths out of it as Ruby's Red Sox and Javier Santiago take charge. It's Ruby's Red Sox with a half mile to go. He leads it now by over a length. Like now is in the second spot. Yes by Jiminy has secured the rail in third. Wise Answer is up in behind him. They're followed by Rexon's Rose. How's your halo down along the rail? Duke's Flying Tiger is now second last. And Hypocrite is still the trailer. Their midpoint on the turn. Ruby's Red Sox on a clear lead. Ruby's Red Sox to the quarter pole. He's opened up two and a half. Yes by Jiminy riding the rails into the second spot. Duke's Flying Tiger is rallying up on the extreme outside as they chase Ruby's Red Sox to the final furlong. Ruby's Red Sox. Yes by Jiminy is inching closer now from the outside. How's your halo? Hypocrite from the back of the pack. It's yes by Jiminy now hitting the front. Yes by Jiminy and Paco Lopez. Late surge from Hypocrite and How's your halo? Yes by by Jiminy takes the Jack Dudley sprint. Yes, by Jiminy with his fifth victory in a row. He hadn't raced since September and now running his record to 10 for 19 at Calder. Yes, by Jiminy scores by three quarters of a length over the late charging hypocrite with How's Your Halo completing the order of the top three. Yes, by Jiminy is Bay Colt, a son of Yes, It's True from Sisters Creek by Pentelicus, bred in Florida by Trilogy Stable and owned by the breeder, trained by Eddie Plesa, and ridden to victory by Paco Lopez. Yes, by Jiminy covers the six in 111.09. Continuing in Florida bred action from call, there are a lot of great racing. Arthur Appleton, Juvenile Turf. And they're off. And a fast start for no strings attached from the inside gate. This one's for Phil came out in good order. Code Runner is right up there on the pace. It's out there is also in that line. And Tambourine is on the grandstand side, a close up fifth as they make their way out of the chute. Edgemore has moved his way over to the head. She's got about seven lengths to make up. And Adari has no early speed. He is 12 lengths last. As they make their way for the clubhouse turn, Code Runner and Eddie Nunez take the lead. It's Code Runner just off the hedge, and he's got the lead now. 
This one's for Phil is content to settle back in the second spot. No strings attached in a tight spot down along the hedge. And it's out there now, takes third and only two and a half lengths off the lead. They're closing up now on Code Runner, who's trying to slow it down after an opening quarter of 23 and one. And it's this one for Phil and Elvis Trujillo coming up to get the lead. This one's for Phil outside of Code Runner. It's out there. Tambourine is on the move. And there goes Tambourine and Edgar Prado on the extreme outside. They've glided up into third. And they're less than two lengths off the lead after a half mile that was 49 and three. Very sluggish second quarter as they run for the far turn. This one's for Phil. Code Runner trying to stick with him down along the hedge. Tambourine is third, but now he's got two and a half or three lengths to make up. They accelerate into the turn. It's out there is coming under a ride. Edgemore is trying to get involved with a Dari from the back of the pack. It's this one's for Phil off the turn, and he's the one to catch. This one's for Phil turns him on down. Tambury on the attack from the outside. This one's for Phil. Tambury coming to him now. Adari is starting to roll home on the grandstand side. Tambury gets the lead. Adari is closing fast at him. It's Tambury. Adari surging as they come down to the line. Tambury or Adari. That one a photo finish in the Appleton Juvenile Turf. Cam Borum, yet another nice performance by a two-year-old turfer. This guy moved on to the turf last time out in Allowance Company at Keeneland and here heads into Florida Bread Company for the first time in his career and scores by a neck over Adari with this one's for Phil, completing the order of the top three. The winner, Cam Borum, a dark bay or brown son of Belong to Me from Mew Mew by Chris S. Was bred in Florida by the R.S. Santa Maria de Adatis and is owned by the breeder, trained by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Tim Borum covers the mile in a 16th of the Appleton in 144.24. Next up, it's Phillies and Mares in the Elmer Quebec Distaff. And they're off. Good start. Peach Flambe broke right on the money. Amazing is coming through to her inside. These two showing the most early lick. Annabelle came out good running in third. Down along the inside, Mia's reflection will save ground as they make their way around the turn. Christmas Ship is caught about three or four wide going into the turn. Then Cat Can Do. Title Dance has about six to make up. And Spirited Sea Cat, sea cat rather takes her spot at the back of the pack. She is nine lengths back of Amazing as they run toward the back stretch. Amazing and Jermaine Bridgemahan on the lead just under a length. Peach Flambe under a tight tug in the second spot. And Annabelle is a close enough third. She's only two lengths off the lead. Then Mia's Reflection. Cat Can Do is between runners right now. Christmas Ship was wide all the way around that turn but she is advancing on the outside only five lengths back title dance has about seven or eight to make up and nothing yet from spirited sea cat the quarter was slow 24 and three the half mile 49 and one and they're less than a half mile out and bridge mahan lets it out a notch now on amazing and she opens up a two-length lead to the far turn peach flambe though right back to her from the second spot annabelle is still right there in third cat can do is down along the rail she may need racing room christmas ship is pinning her in and these five are only separated by three and a half lengths. Amazing, still untested on the front end. Amazing, hasn't been asked for her best yet. And she opens up once again as they come to the top of the lane. It's amazing, she's still got run. Annabelle is out after her now. Peach Flambe is not doing enough. Then Christmas Ship, and it's down to Amazing and Annabelle who's closing in now. Amazing asked for all she's got and Annabelle slowly wearing her down from the outside. Amazing drifting about, Annabelle's got her in her side now they come down to the line amazing or annabelle those two right together in the elmer huback distaff amazing scoring the win or third in a row here this time by a nose of course that is always dangerous when she gets to the front end and uh, here she got to the lead relatively easily at a modest pace and just lasted by a nose over annabelle with christmas ship Back in the third spot, Peach Flambe, the favorite at two to one, chased the uh, loose, uh, loose leader and was never able to make up a ton of ground and settled for fourth. The winner, amazing, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of greatness from Total Wonder by Awesome Again, bred in Florida by Marilyn Fazio Seltzer and owned by the breeder, trained by Terry Oliver and ridden to victory by Jermaine Bridgemahan. Amazing covers the mile and a 16th in 146.89. One more race to bring to you from the Florida Millions Day. That, the Carl G. Rose Classic for Florida Breads. And they're off in the classic perfect start. 
finally made it from the outside gate is the one showing the most early speed and he's able to cross over and clear pretty easily Acton Good has now come through into the second spot Dream Maestro through from the rail Sweet Northern Saints in a good spot but he might be four wide as they make their way into the turn Hal's My Hope is just behind them fifth then it's Marnesia's big boy It's a Bird is about three or four paths wide going into the turn that's a long way back to Atlantic Paws he's got no early speed is already about 14 lengths back in the opening quarter was 23 and 3. It's finally made it. He made the lead very easily under jockey Eddie Nunez. Finally made it on the lead. He's got it three quarters of a length. Acton good inching closer from between runners. And Sweet Northern Saints on the extreme outside third. There goes It's a Bird. It's a Bird way out in the center of the track. He's only two and a half lengths off the lead. Dream Maestro is tucked down in fifth. And Hal's my hope. Marnesia's big boy the wide outside. Nothing yet from Atlantic Paws. Still double digits back. After a half mile of 48 and 4. Pretty leisurely fractions for finally made it and he takes him for the far turn finally made it still three quarters of a length acting good working a little bit harder to get to that leader here's it's a bird now moving on the extreme outside it's a bird now all the way up to a joint second just a length behind finally made it as they wind around the turn finally made it trying to do it all the way on the front end it's a bird is three wide and driving at him now acting good is suddenly under the whip then dream maestro Marnesia's big boy behind them sweet northern saint did not go on and finally Finally made it's got a little over a furlong left to go in the classic finally made it he kicks it into another gear and take a look at him finally made it spurts away it's finally made it he's sprinting down the lane he's got a five now six length lead dream maestro moving outside it's a bird acting good down on the inside but the carl rose classic dominated by finally made it finally made it scoring the victory here at 16 to 1 a relatively formful day of racing uh, culminated with a big upset in the classic has finally made it with a rebound off two very poor performances at 16 to 1 scores his 13th career victory he does so at the expense of dream maestro and the second choice at five to two act in good who chased the pace early the favorite in the field was it's a bird who raced wide and settled for fourth the winner finally made it a chestnut son of Concerto from Gold for My Gal by Gold Alert was bred in Florida by Rolando Rodriguez and Roblier Stable, owned by Roblier Thoroughbred Racing and trained by Javier Negrete. Ridden to victory by Eddie Nunez, finally made it, covers the nine furlongs in 152.15. We'll pause for a brief message. When we return, we've got more great racing action from around the country. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at the Meadowlands, where on Saturday night their stakes feature was the Honey Bee for three-year-old fillies. And they're off. Love for Not comes out running, and here comes Sprightly from the outside. Sprightly and Love for Not, those two hooking up early as they race to the first turn. It's going to be Picker into that third position. D-Star Express is fourth. Sky Copper on the inside, fifth. My Heavenly Sign, sixth on the outside, into the first turn. Then we have Love You Not, second to last at this point, and the trailer is Hemsa, some 10 lengths from the early pace here. Sprightly takes a clear lead. It's Sprightly in front with Love for Not on the inside, second down down the back stretch. Picker on the inside third. D-Star Express is fourth on the outside, racing the back stretch. Opening quarter was 23. Break of four lengths to Sky Copper. 
And then on the rail, we have Love You Not, followed by My Heavenly Sign, dropping back just a bit. And now Hamsa begins to tighten in towards the rail, skims the rail, advances now, still four lengths to get to Sprightly. Sprightly continues to dictate the terms here, 46 and two. Sprightly, D-Star Express, Hamsa with that steady gain from the inside. Hamsa comes on, Love Four Not drops back into the fourth position with three eights to go. Also skimming the inside is Sky Copper. Sky Copper just three lengths from the lead now as My Heavenly Sign drops back past the quarter pole. It's been sprightly from the start. Here's Hemps on the outside trying to size her up. Sky Copper begins to roll from third. Picker now with late run on the inside as they turn for home. It's sprightly in 112 for three quarters. Sprightly in the Honey Bee Stick. Sprightly gave the cold shoulder to Hamsa. On the outside, Sky Copper far back in third inside the sixth and it's Sprightly, and she's home free impressively with Mike Luzzi aboard at 5-2. to two. Sprightly scores by two over Hamsa, Sky Copper, and D-Star Express. Sprightly scoring the victory here. She was third last time out to inform decision in an overnight stake at Belmont back in September. Hadn't raced since. Uh, she did uh, go a route of ground only once prior in her career. That was in the Hollywood Starlet almost a year ago. She had been sprinting all season. Here gets to the front, as is often the case on the stretch out, and never looks back on the sealed sloppy track to score over Hamsa with Sky Copper, nine lengths back in third. The winner, Sprightly, is a Bay Philly, a daughter of Touch Gold from Wood Sprite by Woodman, bred in Kentucky by John E. Smicklis and Barbara Smicklis. Owned by Edward P. Evans and trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by Mike Luzzi, Sprightly covers the mile in the 16th in 143.84. We'll continue with stakes racing action now at Churchill Downs and a pair of stakes over the weekend going back to last Saturday and the grade two Mrs. Revere on the turf. And they're off. Toward the inside, my baby baby broke well. So too did Golden Dock A. Dark Sky from the outside. Ross Silk did not break particularly well and is taken back off the pace. Ross Silk wrangled back. That leaves Golden Dock A and Dark Sky to be the pacemakers under the line for the first time. My baby baby is right there at the inside racing third. Ross Silk is tucked in behind him fourth in some traffic. My princess Jess just a bit wide into that first turn racing fifth. Akuma's got a good spot saving ground while sixth. Sky Mom is seventh. Scalara racing an eighth by another four. Back to absolutely Cindy, who is third to last, and has another three back to seemingly, and the early trailer is Clear Pond. That first quarter, nice and easy. 24 seconds flat down the back stretch. My baby baby is now the leader. Golden Dock A, only mild pressure. Second on the outside. Dark Sky continues three wide third. Ross Silk just tucked in behind him fourth. A good trip so far for Ross Silk. My Princess Jess is racing in the fifth spot. Scalara makes a back stretch move. Here's Scalara, six and up and on the inside. Akuma all of a sudden back racing seventh. And then it's Sky Mom and eighth at about five lengths off the lead as they're midway on the far turn. My baby, baby, Golden Dock A. Here's Ross Silk swinging up three wide. Scalara's just in behind him. My Princess Jess. Akuma with five lengths to make up. They turn for home. My baby, baby digs in, goes clear by two. Ross Silk full out, still second. Scalara, here comes Akuma down the center of the course. My Princess Jess is back to fifth, coming in inside the final furlong, my baby baby, here is Akuma, who levels off in Akuma right on by to the front. My baby baby back to second, Scalara is third, absolutely Cindy fourth on the wire, Akuma. My baby baby second, Scalara third, and absolutely Cindy fourth. Akuma runs her record to two for two now on the turf. She was also a graded stakes winner on the main track and has now won two consecutive graded stakes on turf as well as she scores from a nice position just off the pace with a four wide move to win by a length and a quarter over my baby baby with Scolara back in the third spot. The winner, Acoma, a bay three-year-old daughter of Empire Maker from Aurora by Danzig was bred in Kentucky by Alexander and Groves Thoroughbreds, owned by Helen C. Alexander and Helen K. Groves, trained by David Carroll and ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. Acoma covers the mile in a 16th on the turf course, labeled firm in 143.5. Two. We'll head right back to the turf now at Churchill Downs and Sunday's running of the Grade 3 Commonwealth Turf. And they're off in the Commonwealth Turf.
Pretty good start. Cherokee Triangle down inside broke alertly. So too did Jimmy Sims. All Surratt is forwardly placed. Mr. McCool takes back off the early initiative as they move by his first time round. It is Jimmy Sims out to be the pacemaker. At the inside, Cherokee Triangle sitting right there second. All Surratt is a three wide third. Mr. McCool tucks in with a good spot, saving all the ground in fourth. Nisley's crunch down inside is fifth. Also out far outside now sixth. Snooze Goose is racing in seventh around the first turn. Sea Speak is a wide eighth. Amazing Results is ninth. Veiled Profit saving ground tenth at about eight lengths off the lead. And Boss Lafitte on hold at the back of the pack. So they move down the back stretch after a first quarter in 24 and 4. Cherokee Triangle's on the lead with minor pressure from Jimmy Sims in second. Mr. McCool has been angled to the outside in third. Sea Speak is four wide racing pack to half mile pole in fourth. Nisley's Crunch is fifth and down inside. Amazing Results comes on to take over six. Veiled Profit is seventh and only three lengths off the lead. Snooze Goose is also in the thick of it to within four of the leaders. All Surratt is second to last, still five more to Boss Lafitte the trailer. Midway on the far turn, Jimmy Sims comes up alongside a Cherokee Triangle. Locked and loaded is Nisley's Crunch just in behind him. Sea Speak is three wide. Amazing Results is right in with a chance. So too is Veiled Profit buried down inside Snooze Goose and Mr. McCool. Coming into the final furlong, Jimmy Sims strikes the lead. Here comes Sea Speak outside. Nisley's Crunch tried to come up the rail. Cherokee Triangle had to check. Snooze Goose is coming from between owners with Veiled Profit. Anyone's race coming down to the wire. Sea Speak, Nisley's crunch right in time yes Nisley's crunch found a seam to get it on the wire Nisley's crunch this guy finally living up to my uh, following of him for oh these many months always thought he looked like a horse that was on the verge of breaking out with a big race and here he finally shows that he actually can win a stakes race and graded company winning his fourth cr fourth victory from a, uh, a very busy season this year running just about every one of the grade two and grade three stakes for the three-year-olds on grass Nisley's crunch gets that elusive victory over Sea Speak with Jimmy Sims back in the third spot. Nisley Scrunch is Bay son of Van Nistelrooy from Sam I Am by Island Whirl. Bred in New Jersey by Alien Farms Limited and owned by the breeder, trained by Ken McPeak and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Nisley Scrunch covers the mile in the 16th and 144.48. We'll head out to the West Coast now and take a look at the real quiet for two-year-olds at a mile in the 16th. They're off. JP Jammer breaks best with Danny Q alongside in second. Marques the Coolers at the rail. Charlie's Moment three deep. Chocolate Candy and When We Met are next, and the early trailer is Escalon. JP Jammer fastest to the back stretch, a length and a quarter in front of Danny Q and Mark S. The Cooler, second and third. Charlie's Moment settles fourth now and about three from the front. When We Met is at the rail at tugging fifth. He's got three and a half to come. Chocolate Candy is second to last with four and a half to make up. Escalon at the back of the pack now five lengths from first to last into the back stretch in the fourth. Real quiet stakes and JP Jammer continues to lead. JP Jammer just a neck now, but here comes Charlie's Moment to make an early move for Rosario and the favorite Charlie's moment has gone all the way up to take over the lead. JP Jammer tries to respond to him as Danny Q could not and now he drops back third and a length from the front. Chocolate Candy races in fourth. He's got two and a half to come. Then a lineup of three at the back of the pack. Escalon now three deep when we met and Mark S the cooler and they leave the back stretch. JP Jammer back in front. Three furlongs from the money and JP Jammer is a neck in front of Charlie's moment in second. Chocolate Candy runs up into third now and a length and a half from the front. Danny Q is about to be joined by Escalon. When we met has four to make up. Mark S the cooler is the trailer and JP Jammer is still just in front. Charlie's moment races in second and now Charlie's moment is right alongside. Chocolate Candy could do it. Danny Q is only two behind. Charlie's moment narrowly in front. JP Jammer battles on. Chocolate Candy joins the battle three wide and he's the one. Chocolate Candy now takes charge. Jammer battles on bravely. Chocolate Candy wins. Chocolate candy won a length and a half. When Hollywood Park scheduled this, this race in the Sharp Cat, uh, so close to the Breeders' Cup, it didn't seem to make sense. Their preps for races later on near the Christmas holiday, but uh, chocolate candy looked like a uh, pretty nice, uh, nice winner coming into this race and certainly looks like a two-year-old with a little bit of a future going a route of ground. He only recently won his maiden special weight, but had competed fairly well Prior to that, the maiden win coming at Oak Tree, so he clearly likes the synthetic surfaces. And on the stretch out, Chocolate Candy 
has now run his record to a much improved two for two. Worth noting that he will probably be pointed for the, uh, the running of the Hollywood Futurity just about near Christmas at the end of this meet. Chocolate Candy scores the victory by a length and a half over J.P. Jammer and Charlie's Moment, who was the favorite in the field, a busy two-year-old. He won a stakes race at the Fairplex and had run against some pretty nice horses out in Southern California throughout the course of the season. The winner, Chocolate Candy, is a two-year-old bay son of Candy Ride from Crownette by Seattle Slough. Bred in Kentucky by Sid and Jenny Craig, owned by the Breeders and trained by Jerry Hollendorfer. Written to victory by Garrett Gomez, Chocolate Candy covers the mile in a 16th and 142.25. We'll head back home to New York to Aqueduct and Saturday's stakes feature on the turf, the Grade 2 Red Snick. And they're off. Van Rock is hustled out of there. And Precious Passion with early speed. Strike a deal broke well, but has reined in. And wheels up at noon is with the pace on the outside. So they hit the first turn. And it's going to be Precious Passion to be the leader. Wheels up at noon to second. Van Rock now back in third. Strike a deal is racing fourth. Always first. Fifth on the inside. And then it's Laurel, who is little rank in the first furlong there. Laurel's on the outside near the back of the pack. And Hardtop is the trailer. So by us the first time now. And Precious Passion will have an uncontested lead and opens up three and a half lengths on the field. Wheels up at noon is second on the outside. Van Rock hugs the fence in third position. And then on the outside, it's strike a deal fourth. And the German runner, Loro, is covered up beautifully. In behind horses, only about four lengths from the lead with seven furlongs to go. Moving up at the outside, it's hard top. And at the back is always first. The opening half mile goes in 52 and 4 fifth seconds over the yielding going here. And up top, it's still Precious Passion. Trying to get to that lead now. It's wheels up at noon. Wheels up at noon now, trying to press the pace. Banrock third on the inside, strike a deal fourth. Laurel well held while in behind horses in fifth. Then it's always first on the inside, and Hardtop follows Laurel down the backstretch run. Wheels up at noon, a long shot, poked ahead in front. But Precious Passion came right back to reclaim the lead. Strike a deal on the outside, third Laurel then behind that group. And now Laurel moves over to the inside just ahead of Van Rock. Hard top in behind horses, only three lengths from the lead as they move into the far turn. And always first is the trailer, but within striking range as the field moves into the far turn. It's been Precious Passion throughout. Laurel took a good crack at him, but Precious Passion turned him right away. Precious Passion opens up to link lead. Laurel is in an all-out drive, running second. On the inside, it's Banrock. Wheels up at noon on the far outside. Strike a deal in hard top. Top of the stretch. Precious Passion. Laurel takes another run at him. But here's Strike a deal, and here's Banrock. Laurel held the lead, but only briefly. And Strike a deal strikes the lead at the eighth pole and is going away by four, by five. Strike a deal has won the Red Smith by six and a half emphatic lengths over Loro and Ben Rock. Another horse earning a rather elusive victory this week is Strike a Deal, picking up his first graded stakes win and his first win of the year. This guy has been in against some pretty nice horses, run a number of second place finishes, but here turns the tables to romp off by seven lengths on a yielding turf course from uh, German runner Loro, who did take a lot of money, just over five to two in the betting. Ben Rock, another specialist on yielding surfaces, moves in from New York Bread Company to run third. The winner, Strike a Deal, is a bay four-year-old son of Smart Strike from Shag by Dixieland Band, bred in Kentucky by BZ LLC and owned by JFB Stable, trained by Alan Goldberg and ridden to victory by Chucky Lopez. Strike a Deal covers the mile and three furlongs on the yielding surface in 223.28. We will pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, it's New York Stallion Series Day, Sunday at the Big A.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now with Sunday Stakes action from Aqueduct. All of it, New York, New York Stallion Series events, and we'll kick things off with the Fifth Avenue Division of the New York Stallion Series. Hundred thousand dollars, two-year-old fillies, and again, all races, all of these Stallion Series races for the offspring of New York Stallions. Let's head to New York and the running of the Fifth Avenue. They're off. She's Prime breaks well, so too Mother Russia there on the outside. Mother Russia up for the lead. She's Prime on the inside, second. Jem Farouk in between those two now, third. Sarah accomplished fourth and moving quickly on the outside from fifth. And that it's kissing, flying down toward the inside is on Jory, and the early trailer is sneaking up, sneaking up, slow to find her best stride. They race for the far turn. And up top, it's Mother Russia through a quarter and 22 and three fifth seconds. Sarah Accomplish pressing on the outside. She's prime. Now back third at the rail. On the outside, Kiss and Fly is advancing now from fourth. Then it's Jem for Hook who's right there in the thick of it in between horses and fifth. Followed by Ann Jory. And sneaking up takes to the far outside as the field turns for home. Mother Russia still in front. Mother Russia grinding it out on the lead. On the outside, Sarah Accomplished is full out second. She's prime on the inside third. And Jim for Hook brushes in the stretch with Kiss and Fly. Final 16th. Here's Sarah accomplished on the outside. Mother Russia fighting on. And here's the wire. And Sarah accomplished is the winner. Mother Russia finishing second, close for third. She's prime and Jim for Hook. Sarah accomplished scores the victory. Here's the second choice over the favored Mother Russia with She's Prime completing the order of the top three. The winner, Sarah, accomplished a cutback fifth, uh, a cutback after running fifth in the maid of the mist at eight furlongs last time out. Obviously, the shorter distance seemed to suit her quite nicely as she scores by three quarters of a length over the favorite. Sarah, accomplished, is a two year old dark bay or brown daughter of performing magic from Accomplished by Awesome Again. Bred in New York by Sugar Maple Farm and owned by the breeder. Trained by Richard Dutrow Jr. and ridden to victory by Jose Lascano. Sarah Accomplished covers the six furlongs in 111.54. We'll head back to Stallion Series competition in the Great White Way. Four two-year-olds going six. They're off, and looking at her, got the jump on them right at the gate. Quickly in front by two, as the others just got underway. Scooty the Pro comes up second on the outside, head hard hoof, catching up to the lead now right there, running in third. Photography of fourth on the outside. And Tall Poppy is fifth at the rail, five lengths from the lead. Bit of Baz alongside Tall Poppy. And then it's two and a half lengths back to early response. Another five back to Gargantua. 22 and three was the opening quarter. And the field rounding the far turn. It's looking at her with the narrow lead. Room at the inside for the favorite. Here's Tall Poppy. Tall Poppy now, but looking at her, kicks in again. Opens it up a length and a half. Tall Poppy second on the inside. On the outside, Photographia runs in third. Looking at her, kicks away by two and a half. Tall Poppy on the inside, shoulder to shoulder with Photographia. Looking at her, running a remarkable race. And Tall Poppy exchanging blows here in the stretch with Photographia. They've been bouncing each other around the whole way. But as they come down to the finish, here's a very remarkable effort. It's a good looking effort. Looking at her, indeed. A five-length win. Tall Poppy was second. Photographia was third. Looking at her scores the victory. Dueled very hard last time out of Finger Lakes. And, uh, in fact, they, a couple of very early fractions that just did him in late. Prior to that, had run quite well in the Aspirant at Finger Lakes. Here, he absolutely romps after getting to the lead fairly early. Scores off by five and a quarter lengths as the ten, one of the ten-to-one outsiders. Tall Poppy, the favorite at odds on, completes the exacta with Photographia and only a second career start running third. The winner, looking at her, is a gray or a roan two-year-old son of Hook and Ladder from Absolutely Lovely by Silver Goat. Bred in New York by Chester and Mary Broman and owned by the breeders, trained by Ramon Hernandez, Mike Hernandez, com the uh, rider Cornelio Velasquez, and looking at her, covers the six furlongs in 111.09. We'll head right back to the Big A now in the Perfect Arc Division of the Stallion Series. Phillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. And they're off. 
Bella Trice from the rail, Mamie B between horses. Follow my dream and sex in the city on the far outside. And it's Mamie B, Mamie B, who will be the long shot leader in the early stages here. And the pace will be very deliberate. On the outside, Sex in the City, up now, running in second. Follow my dreams. Found our way to the inside, running in third. O'Calligator, fourth, behind a dawdling pace. Western Slang races in fifth position. At the back of the pack, Bella Atrice and Borrowing Base. So Mamie B takes him through a quarter in a glacial 26 seconds flat. The lead's a length. Sex in the City runs second, and Follow My Dream sits back in third. O'Calligator in the clear on the outside, fourth. Western Slang drafting in behind horses in fifth position on the outside. Barring base is on hold while sixth, and Bella Trice trails the field only five and a half lengths from the pokey pace up front. 53 seconds flat. They're barely in a gallop with a half mile to go. They'll start running soon with Mamie B still the leader. There's O'Calligator. O'Calligator the first to make a move now as they approach the far turn. Sacks in the city down toward the inside. At the rail, follow my dreams. On the outside, borrowing base and western slang. Bella Trice kicking in far outside. Room at the rail for follow my dreams who drives through and takes the lead with a decisive thrust. Follow my dreams has taken the lead. Mamie B is second on the outside. Sacks in the city is now third toward the rail. Bella Trice fourth with one for long to go. Follow my dream. A length and a half lead. Saxon the city runs at her at the 16th pole. It is follow my dream. Trying to hold off the oncoming Saxon the city. Boring base on the scene late. Here's the wire. Follow my dream did it. With that decisive move, turning for home. Follow my dream is the winner. Close for second. Boring base or sex in the city. Follow my dream, who likes a softer or yielding turf course, gets just that here and scores the victory. Last time out, she was a fairly close fourth in an open allowance race at the Big A on turf labeled good. Here she gets a yielding surface and scores by a half length over sex in the city, only a nose back to borrowing base in third. The winner, follow my dream, is a bay mare, a daughter of Freud from Phoenician Mist by Classic Go-Go. Bred in New York by Thomas and Lakin and owned by George Santangelo. Trained by Colm O'Brien and ridden to victory by Jose Lescano. Follow My Dream covers the mile and a 16th on that yielding turf in 149.22. Next up, we'll head back to Aqueduct, the Staten Island Division. Staten Island's division of the New York Stallion Series for fillies and mares sprinting. And they're off. It was a good beginning for under service from her inside post, and she's up and after the lead. City Vice going to keep her company in the early stages here. On the outside, way to the left, has come out running third. Laurentine Ice is fourth, twist away fifth on the outside. Raffi's Treasure is sixth. Point me to it is seventh at the rail. Down the back stretch run, and the favorite has taken charge. It's under service, who's striding away now to lead by a length. On the outside, City Vice runs in second. Point me to it. Tugs up now third toward the inside. Far outside, way to the left, is now fourth. Then Raffi's Treasure, Laurentide Ice, and Twist Away. Under service, got a quarter in 22 and 3. Still leads the pack round the far turn. Moving through between horses, Raffi's Treasure. Then on the far outside, point to the left, City Vice in between those two. And down on the inside, point me to it. Moving toward the top of the stretch. The half was up in 45 and 4 fifth seconds. And in control, it's under serviced. Hand ridden off the turn. Now just a little nudge from Johnny Velasquez. Under service leads by two and a half with one for long to go. Point me to it is in an all-out drive. Getting closer. Point me to it's getting closer. Going to make a race of it for the heavy favorite here. Under service. Under service narrowly. Point me to it. Under service. Point me to it. Heads bobbing on the wire. A photo finish that may, may have gone to under service. Those noses were up and down on the line. It'll be a bob. Point me to it was right there. Under service, very nice effort by this filly. She was third in the Iroquois. She had won the Schenectady and won a nice allowance race up here at Saratoga earlier on in the season. She got to the front end as the favorite at odds on and just held off the nearly 20 to 1 point me to it. It was a long eight and a half lengths back to Raffi's treasure in the third spot. The winner under service is a bay filly, a daughter of hook and ladder from Gay's Blossom by 36 red. Bred in New York by Thomas and Lakin and owned by Whiteman Performances, Mike Pegram and Carl Watson. Trained by Bob Baffert and ridden to victory 
by John Velasquez, underserviced, covers the seven furlongs in 123.54. Right back to the Big A now as we continue with Stallion Series racing in the Cormorant on the turf for older horses. And they're off. It's Baxter who breaks on top, moving on the inside, Logic Way, away running in second, then Pennington. The confidence band's taken under stout restraint early on. On the far outside, it's fairway drive. Then down on the fence, kettle two and classic pack. Bias for the first time now, and Baxter leads the way. Pennington on the outside. Rajiv Mirage trying to throttle down his speed. He backs off to sit second into the turn. Logic Way gets a cozy spot early on. Now third toward the inside. The confidence band has settled down back and forth. Then classic pack followed by fairway drive and kettle two. The opening quarter mile was uh, 24 and three-fifths seconds into the back stretch run, and Baxter on the lead. Pennington sitting chilly, second on the outside. Logic Way cruising along comfortably, third at the rail, right alongside the confidence man is fourth. Classic pack fairway drive and kettle two. There's a half mile to go. The opening half went in 50 seconds flat, and now... It's Pennington now who's up and after the lead on the outside. And Baxter gives way readily. Pennington in charge. Baxter backing up. It's Pennington, the leader. The confidence man in a drive second on the outside. Logic Way is ready to roll right there on the inside. Here comes Classic Pack who's revving up on the far outside. Pennington, the leader at the top of the stretch. Classic Pack runs at him at the furlong marker. Logic Way is third. Here comes Classic Pack. Up to get the lead. It's Classic Pack in front. Pennington now back in second. Logic Way is third. Coming down to the finish. Classic Pack and Cornelia Velasquez with a big day today. It's Classic Pack, a two-length winner. Pennington second. Logic Way third. Classic Pack. He was an upset stakes winner at the age of three and has been knocking around, running against some pretty nice horses ever since. And here gets the victory by two and a half lengths over Pennington with Logic Way, the favorite, back in third. He was beaten only a length and a half by Logic Way last time out in stakes company. So uh, Classic Pack did look like a legitimate contender in here, especially as Logic Way was forced to carry a couple more pounds, the 124 pound high weight in the field. Classic Pack is a bay son of Regal Classic from Three Pack by Stack Pack, bred in New York by John T. Becker and owned by the breeder, trained by Mike Hernandez and ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez. Classic Pack covers the mile in the 16th and 145.56. Next up, the final stakes race on Saturday, or on Sunday rather, Sunday afternoon at the Big A, the Thunder Rumble, $75,000 for three-year-olds and up. They're in the gate. They're off. Irish Blast bouncing out on the lead, and quickly here's Spanky Fishbine up second on the inside. Far outside is Ida O'Neill running in third, and then it's Golden Roses racing fourth. Good card fifth, Prince of Peace far outside sixth. More chances, and Almighty Silver. Chasing Irish Blast on the backstretch run, and right in behind are Gold and Roses, Spanky Fishbine, and Oedipus O'Neill on the far outside. Good card, well held in behind horses while running in fourth. Prince of Peace in the far outside and buried down on the fence, Almighty Silver and the trailer more chances. A tight pack behind a 22 and four opening quarter. What set was Irish Blast the leader? Irish Blast in front, turning up that pressure. Oedipus O'Neill, Spanky Fish by at the bail. Good card there on the outside. Golden Roses, more chances. Almighty Silver, Prince of Peace has dropped back. The field turning for home, and it's still Irish Blast on top. Good card driving now. Second on the outside. Golden Roses bottled up too tight there. More chances in the clear on the far outside. Momentum carrying more chances from the far outside. Good card is there. Golden Roses gets through on the rail. Coming down to the finish. It is more chances. More chances. Got it. By a neck. Close for second. Good card. Golden Roses. And Almighty Silver. More chances scoring the victory here. First off, the $50,000 claim was claimed on September 21st by Rick Dutrow off of an eighth place performance. Brought back here in Stakes Company in the, uh, within the New York Stallion Series and scores a three-quarter length 7-1 to one victory over Good Card. Also, at, uh, actually, he had almost 
eight to one with Golden Roses at seven to one exactly, scoring the top three spots. The winner, more chances. A Bay Colt, a son of American chance from Miss Winmore by Northern Baby, was bred in New York by Michael E. Lauer and Penny S. Lauer, owned by Vincent Scuderi and Sullivan Lane Stable, trained by Richard Dutro Jr. and ridden to victory by Jose Lescano. More chances covers the seven furlongs at the Big A in 122.68. That'll wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next time as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.